Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Grim, the Lord of Salt. Today, we are going to be talking about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero's difficulties. It's been the topic of discussion on social media, and the big issue is whether or not it's too difficult. Now, it is a very difficult game. As I mentioned in my review, there's a very steep learning curve. It can be overcome, but it does take time and dedication. And I do think that there's two sides to see to this coin now. Generally, no, I don't think it's too difficult. But it definitely has elements in there that I think do kind of over... <clears throat> there are elements of it that I think overwrite some of the plus sides of the game's engine. Ugh. There are parts of the difficulty that overshadow the highlights of the combat engine, which is because it's so high on the difficulty end, it doesn't give you a lot of time to explore offensive options in the combat engine. It does mean that you spend your vast majority of your time figuring out what counter to use against the counter so you can counter another counter. And a lot of the counters have to be done preemptively, so you're pretty much fight, fighting defensively from the beginning on the default difficulty, which does negate a lot of the technical achievements on the offensive end of things. The whole Dragon Rush and Dragon Pursuits and the different smash attacks you can do are pretty much non-existent because you're too busy countering and because counters use energy they use often skill points or stocks whatever you want to call them uh, it will leave you depleted by the time you finally knock your opponent away and you can't follow up with a, an offense of any kind this is a fact of how the game's engineered whether it's good or bad depends it's certainly good from a competitive standpoint and it does tool you for being better online which is certainly uh, draw to that. However, not everybody wants to jump in and just ignore half the engine so they can be competitive and some people do want to explore those offensive options, especially if you're looking to simulate the experience again of the anime itself and you just want to knock opponents around like a pinball machine like uh, you could in the older games. Now there is of course the easy difficulty and there are accessibility options, so all of that is still there. But I do think the game would benefit from a little more balancing. There should be three difficulty settings. I'm not one of those people against difficulty settings in general. Some games benefit from not having it. And some games do benefit from having it. And you got the easy mode. But what you got here instead of a normal mode is a hard mode. So would a normal mode be beneficial here? An actual normal mode? I think so. It would give people time to adapt, to learn to the system before they're ready to jump to hard and start on the competitive angle of things. That said, it's not bad the way it is. Even as a casual player myself who's not very good at games in general, I was still able to adapt and get good. And now when I fight Grade 8 Vegeta, he doesn't even defeat me anymore. It's not even a thing. In the beginning, I wasn't even good enough to trigger the what-if scenarios, which is a certain thing that probably should be mentioned that, yes, they include these nice what-if stories. Unfortunately, they're only accessible if you're good at the game. Because if you switch it to easy mode, you can no longer achieve the bonus objectives to trigger the alternate stories so you have to get good before you can enjoy the what ifs which I do also think is a bit convoluted again makes sense when you're grooming people for online but for the casual audience this means that they're only going to experience half the story or so that's available on the offline content which is what they're going to be looking at the most in the first place so I do think there's two sides to that coin that could be argued however I do think the game's fine as it is it doesn't really need an adjustment uh, the fact is that uh, once you get good enough to unlock those scenarios, uh, if you do have trouble beating them, you can turn it back to easy mode. You can put your accessibility options back on and still play through those modes. So it doesn't really defect the system whatsoever in that regard. It's just getting to that point. But it's not that hard. I've played this game for a week now. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm not actually good at these. I'm not a competitive gamer, even though I have history. But the, the engine's completely new here, so... It's definitely not a case of um, my veteran status helping me at all, <laughs> whatsoever. All the old strategies I used in Tenkaichi and Raging Blast out the window here, because just the addition of things like the, uh, the Rage Counter, the Super Counter, and the Perception, all this stuff adds, and it's, it's a completely new system now. And uh, even just setting up Rush Attacks, Rush Specials, Supers rather, is a whole new ball game compared to what it used to be. Same with energy attacks. So, it's not impossible to adapt to, it just means you have to take the time. If you're a fan, it's a no-brainer you're gonna put the time in. So, the only thing I can see that's affecting negatively is casual gamers who aren't that interested in anime games in the first place. will have difficulty 
getting into certain features because they don't have the time to commit to actually getting good at the game. And I don't really see that as a, a major downside. Anybody who's willing to invest the time can do it. So, again, I've argued myself in a circle, but that's my take on it. Uh, if you're having trouble with... I, I haven't heard anybody rage quitting over Grade 8 Virginia. A lot of people talking uh, smack, a lot of people memeing on it, you know, complaining. I haven't heard anybody rage quitting the game. Nobody has said, I'm not playing this game anymore because of this this fight. We all rag on just how hard it is. And it is hard when you first encounter it. You, again, you got the tryhards pretending it, it, it was easy from the beginning. I, I Yeah, I watched Asmin Gold beat the Grade 8 Vegeta in one try. And it was embarrassing. And I well, what I think worked against me the first time I fought Grade 8 was I was trying to play it like an old Tenkaichi game. And that was actually playing against me in my head. My the logic and also I he didn't know the basics either so that's not an excuse but he was just playing you know I was trying to to adapt my old psychology to this new engine and it wasn't working for me so I, that I think is what held me back and probably a lot of veterans as well and uh, and I think Asmongold just got lucky because that ape never grabbed him he used the grab throw once but I have seen great ape Vegeta spam grab throws on players who get close uh, he hasn't done it to me, but it's happened, and that will cripple your chance of just getting lucky and comboing the guy, like Asmongold did. So <laughs> it happens, but uh, it doesn't. Ha it didn't happen to me, and it didn't happen to a lot of people. So yes, Great Ape Vegeta is challenging your first time, but it will get to the point where you get good enough that he's not that much of a challenge anymore. He can still be rough at times, as any fight can. Even Raditz still kicks my butt every now and then, but there's definitely a learning curve to it and once you get over that I haven't lost to him since that first fight I had well the first batch of fights I had <laughs> I did a lot not of rage quitting but I retried you know reset the fight a lot because it's just faster than when you get the loading screen at the end so uh, yeah that's the take on my take on great Ape Vegeta he is tough but he's breaking you into the game he's making you learn how to play and once you get to that point uh, he's not that hard to deal with anymore same with the unlocking the what-if scenarios. In the beginning, they're extremely difficult. The only challenge towards the end sometimes is figuring out what you need to do to trigger it because the game sometimes tells you, sometimes it doesn't. You know, it might be a completely different battle you have to make a decision in or, or do differently that somehow unlocks a feature in this battle that will open up the new timeline. And then, of course, you have uh, just the alternate endings versus alternate timeline deals. Man, that goes all over the place. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely got those tiers of challenge to it, and a lot of people bring up uh, the Ginyu Force as well. Uh, I beat them on my most recent try in, in one try, so with uh, Spirit Bomb Spam, it's not a fun technique to use, but it does the trick, and when you, it's five on one, you gotta do what you gotta do. Goku's only, that version of Goku's only capable of so much, so you get by, and uh, so yeah, that is another challenging fight. People like to bring up, well, if you think the Great Ape was bad, wait till you have to fight the whole Ginyu Force. And yes, that's bad, but in a different way, and you can still, you can basically spam your way through the whole game if you wanted to on single player, uh, which is not fun to do, but it is viable. <laughs> you know, I would criticize people in the beta version for doing just that, but now that I have the game in hand, I can see that as far as just being successful, and it does look, the footage looks completely different now than what we were seeing from early builds. I think they were withholding a lot of the difficulty on those builds. So all those players that got lucky with their early access, uh, ultimately they were playing a completely different kind of game uh, than I think what the rest of us got uh, in advanced access and now have in uh, standard release as well. Uh, so the mass market has been with us for three days now on this release. So, Anyways, yeah, and uh, there's also other talk about nerfing this and that and the other thing. The big thing right now is uh, after image strike, everyone wants it nerfed. Uh, after image strike is defensive ability, you'll automatically vanish, you know, Z counter uh, for a limited time and people want this removed, nerfed, whatever. I've never been a fan of nerfing um, because companies, d developers take this too far. They do what the tryhards ask them. The tryhards are a vocal minority of fans who think they're competitive gamers but lack the actual skill. They're, they're the exploit seekers. You know, they're the spammers. They're the rage quitters, right? And they are, they make the most noise, so they tend to get the most direct feedback. So they sit there and say, this has to be nerfed. And what they want is it to be completely castrated. They want it neutered and fucking nuked out, out from orbit, okay? So that's what they want, and that's usually what the developers give them, unfortunately. 
I'm not a fan of this because it basically it neuters the game itself. You're, you're ruining a feature for a handful of gamers who can't adapt. And that, I think, is just bad development in general. And this is another one of those cases where you can see when you're fighting an opponent online, you can track their, their skill points, their uh, stocks, as it were. And when you see that disappear and nothing happens, you know something's there, okay? They're either doing wild sense or after image. And so you, you keep your distance and you play the distance game until you think it's safe to approach them again. That's, a, again, just a basic strategy of how you would deal with something like after image strike. But again, the tryhards can't adapt that way. They want the game forced to be changed for everybody. And, uh, and I am against that. Now, I will say, After Image Strike does sound a bit OP, but it's also applied to some of the weaker cast in the game. Master Roshi does it. Uh, Team Go Goku does it. You know, some of the lesser-known characters, because it's an old technique. It's based on Master Roshi's After Image technique. So it's, it's assigned usually to a handful of lesser characters. Some middle-range characters have it, but one exception, the only exception, as far as I know, is Super Vegito. Uh, Z Vegito, if you will. He does have it. He probably shouldn't. Because he is already a strong character. He doesn't need that buff. So you could give him a different buff. Again, that would, to me, be an okay change. That's not a nerf. You see, the thing is, in terms of game balancing, nerfing and buffing, they're not supposed to be extreme. When you nerf something, you're supposed to dull it a little bit. When you buff it, you're supposed to sharpen it a little bit. And there are minor differences meant to adjust balance. But because of these tryhards making these extreme cases, devs tend to go all in and they nerf something to the point that it becomes an unusable feature completely. So they would want After Image basically not taken out of the game literally, but reduced in effectiveness to such a point nobody would ever touch it again, which is effectively the same thing, if not worse. Because to me it's worse because you can see that there was something there that was once viable, that because the, dev the developers listened to uh, some crabby tryhards, is now no longer a good thing. So and that to me is, is backwards game development and uh, should really never happen. And there's other examples in games as well. I, I use this example a lot in Seven Days to Die. You know, they've made a lot of adjustments there and a, a perfect example of it is the farming. You know, farming was implemented into the game so that with a little effort, players could grow their own food sources, their own water sources, and, uh, and it was viable. But because some people felt it made the game too easy, because if, yeah, if you exploit it, like anything you exploit, it's going to make things easier. And because of that, again, the tryhards are saying this isn't hard enough. We need you to make this harder, not just for us, but for everybody. So they neutered farming to the point that, like I said, it's completely ineffective now. There's absolutely no reason to farm in that game anymore because it's so expensive and it yields so little result. You, in order to make it viable at all, you have to master class into it. And even then, the only way you're actually going to need that much food, because you find so much of it anyway, is if you're specifically going with that build, the boxing build, you know, the, the bar brawling type. Because those are the ones, those magazines are the ones that have the benefits that require the extra food uh, in order to fuel your regeneration and all that. So it's only that build that needs the extra food. Nobody else needs it, so nobody else should really bother investing in it because the cost of being a farmer is just too high in that game. You're better off investing those points into literally anything else because anything else will give you a better benefit in general than farming will. And that's unfortunate because farming used to be an interesting sub-mechanic of the game. It was something else to keep you busy at night between days or whatever. Now it's just that only one class is based even in doing it. The rest of the time at most if you find farm plots because they're not worth making you stick them out there, and if you have a few seeds laying around, you throw them in, and that's it. Just to get rid of the seeds. You can also sell the seeds, which makes the whole thing pointless, like I said. Um, and as a result, you're better off skipping your rotten meats. And your... Well, not so much the nitrate, but uh, even the clay. Clay and nitrate you can use for other things, but the rotten meats, you might as well throw it away unless you're going to be a farmer. You know, so that's... that's Again, that's that's how this sort of thing works. They neuter something until it's, it is no longer a feature, basically. But they keep it around to remind you that at one point it was. And it's the same thing with farming in Subnautica. You know, it used to be something uh, convenient. It would give you extra food. People thought, well, now that you can grow your own food, there's no reason to do anything. So it should be neutered, and it was. Now, the problem is there is other things to do. You want to get off the planet. And there's, there's other reasons you want to do that as well. I don't want to spoil the game. But you don't want to just stay in your habitat forever. That's... That's not a thing. So 
They were they neutered it because of an issue that wasn't there, because they listened to tryhards, which is unfortunate because now there's no point when you're playing the game if you put plants in there, might as well just be for decoration, you know, because it's not worth the effort generally speaking. So yeah, that's that's my take on it on the difficulty issues. I hope nothing gets nerfed here, right? Not certainly not the traditional way. If they wanted to take it away from Super Vegito, fine because they're tired of seeing Super Vegito spam online, because, again, the tryhard racking up the wins with their exploits. Um, and that's that's fine. But uh, if they're going to completely neuter it, and in the process make lesser characters like Master Roshi and Team Goku completely unviable online, that's unfortunate. And, uh, and that would make online play pretty much pointless at that point, because you might as well just spam the characters that everybody knows is good, or just not bother, so... That's my take. I still haven't gotten online because the game has been kicking my tail. It's been draining me a lot in a lot of different ways. I finally got to the point where I'm comfortable with it and I can get into it a little more. But yeah, those, those first few days, uh, I didn't get a lot of content done on it because, because it was kicking my ass. And that, uh, that left me mentally drained. And I just didn't want <laughs> to, to dig in anymore. I wanted a break. And to let my brain melt for a little while. So, yeah. That's why I haven't been online, and if they keep, if they do go forward and start nerfing things, I'll, I'll never touch online because there's no point. Uh, the only point is that it's unbalanced, and you get to use your skill to find ways to overcome the balance issues. And if they, if you don't have that obstacle to overcome, and you're just spamming the best of the best like everybody else is, there's there's just no point. It's a waste of time. So uh, we'll see. I'll keep an eye on how the online scene goes. So. If it does go downhill like that, you, you won't see any content from me there. But if it stays the way it is, you know, I'll definitely give it a shot and see how far we can ride that as well. Like I said, there's still a lot of single player content to go through. I haven't even dug into the, the custom battle mode or any of that. So, uh, yeah, I got a lot more work to do. Anyways, I hope you guys found this in uh, video informative or interesting. Uh, until next time, this is Grim signing off saying stay salty.